everyone, and thank you for joining our last day of our AgriAbility Wisconsin Virtual Summit. We're going to get started here. I guess it's right, it's 11 o'clock right now, so we'll get started um, with just a quick introduction. For those of you who have joined us the last two days, uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate it, and you're going to be seeing some similar slides here um, as just a welcome to learn from, uh, from what we are. All right, I'm bidding some folks, so just a sec. All right, so um, as you can see on the screen right now, uh, AgroAbility of Wisconsin is kind of brought to you by numerous programs, University of Wisconsin Extension, through the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, as well as the Biological Systems Engineering Department. And that's really where you'll find me uh, doing grant writing, public education, outreach, and marketing. And then on the other side, we have our Easter Seals of Wisconsin uh, nonprofit partner and the Farm Assessment and Rehabilitation Methods Program. And once uh, I enroll our clients, they take care of all of the direct client services. So they go out to the farms, meet with the clients, uh, handle um, providing any additional information and needed, stuff like that. And then as you can see, uh, just a quick photo of our AgriAbility staff, myself, uh, Dr. Brian Luck and Dr. Richard Straub um, on our UW side. And then on the Easter Seals uh, farm program staff, you can see there's quite a few more because we have some case workers, rehab specialists, office helpers, grant writers, um, but all of us work together as a team to keep AgriAbility of Wisconsin at um, top of mind for our farmers. Uh, today, I just want to uh, let you know that we have um, the, a few folks from the Wisconsin Farm Center joining us, and they're going to be speaking about farm financials and farm wellness. We have Dan Bauer, who's the program supervisor, Jane Kroll, who's the Bureau, Dire Bureau Director in Ag Resource and Promotion, and Mike Lochner, who's the Financial Consulting and Farm Succession Planning Specialist. Uh, before I hand it over to them, I am going to let one of my counterparts, Jeff Crottowell, uh, on Eastern Seals of Wisconsin. Um, sure, thanks, Amanda. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jeff Crottowell. I'm the program director for the Easter Seals Farm Program. As Amanda mentioned earlier, Easter Seals Farm Program is responsible for the direct client services, uh, meaning the um, on site farm visits, um, visiting farmers throughout the state of Wisconsin. The Easter Seals Farm Program started in approximately 1989. I believe it's 1989. Um, since that time, uh, in conjunction with AgriAbility, we've served over 3,000 farmers throughout the state of Wisconsin um, and uh, have served a farmer in every county throughout Wisconsin. Um, often the farm visit side of things, we can visit to the, make that visit to the farmer um, at no cost to the farmer. Um, to help him um, identify some things to make the farm work easier to do alongside with his disability limitations. I'm very happy that the Farm Center um, is able to present today. They're a strong supporter and so strong partner for us um, within the AgriAbility Project and for us at Easter Seals Farm Program. So um, thanks. Back to you, Amanda. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeff. All right. So I will hand it over then to our Wisconsin Farm Center folks and they can get their presentation started. I know they have a lot of great information to share today. Thanks, Amanda. And then is uh, our slide set showing correctly? Perfect. I'm getting a couple thumbs up, a couple head nods. So, um, well, thanks again, Amanda and Jeff. It's just an absolute pleasure to be with you all today. Um, as Jeff mentioned, I, I really echo his sentiment that um, the Wisconsin Farm Center uh, really values our partnership with the UW AgriAbility Program of Wisconsin and Easter Seals as well. It's a real pleasure for us to uh, work together cooperatively with them to be advocates for Wisconsin agriculture, help Wisconsin farmers and help uh, grow the Wisconsin agriculture industry and economy. So what we'll be covering today, as uh, Amanda mentioned, is I've got a couple of my esteemed colleagues that will be joining me. Um, and so we'll kind of uh, take a, uh, a teamwork effort in this presentation. 
Um, I'm going to kick it off by talking about um, just an overview of the Wisconsin Farm Center. Uh, this program area is a part of the Division of Agriculture Development, and uh, that division is housed at the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection, or, or DADCAP, as uh, you know, some of you will be familiar with that acronym. Uh, today, we'll cover an overview of Farm Center Services, and then we'll move into our recently launched Farmer Wellness Program. And then we'll finish with um, some recommendations and guidance on approaching farm financials. So that's kind of our agenda for this program. Uh, so this slide is something that we put together uh, last fall and it's a really nice overview of uh, the services offered within the Wisconsin Farm Center. Uh, one of the real important uh, features of our program is um, we have a hotline that is uh, staffed from Monday to Friday, 745 to 430. As you can see on the slide, we've got the number, we've got the email, and the entire team uh, helps man that uh, hotline. And um, we're just available to help uh, take cases, help answer questions, uh, explain different government relief programs. Um, we just get a variety of questions and um, it's your opportunity to reach someone in the farm center at DADCAP uh, to help with a variety of issues that um, Wisconsin farmers might uh, run into. Little history about the farm center. The farm center was born out of the financial crisis of the 1980s. Um, at that time, we saw a farm recession saddle many Midwest farmers with heavy debt loads. In the early 80s, tight money policies by the Federal Reserve designed to bring down uh, high interest rates caused farmland values to drop up to 60% in some parts of the Midwest. Uh, for these reasons, the Farm Center uh, was developed by the state government. And in its infancy, it was focused on building relationships with both egg lenders and farmers in our state to increase the availability of farm loans to producers in order to help weather this crisis and help them remain in business. Over time, the Farm Center services have evolved and expanded to the current offer, which you can see on this slide. Um, currently, we're committed to helping producers navigate the farming life cycle from beginning, growth, change, challenging times, succession, and on into retirement. All the services offered by the Farm Center are free and confidential to farmers. And today the Farm Center focuses on six key service areas. Uh, financial consulting, well, which we'll talk about in on an upcoming slide. Transition planning, mediation, herd-based diagnostics, veteran farmer support, and then the farmer wellness program, which we'll also cover today. Um, with that said, we'll move into uh, helping you uh, get an overview of the team, and then also uh, talking about some of these key program areas. Looking at the Farm Center staff, um, we have currently five people on the direct team. As mentioned by Amanda, I work as a program supervisor, and then uh, we have Frank Fryer, Mike Lochner, Kevin Plant, Jack Areda, and Dr. John Tracy. The majority of the team um, would have backgrounds in ag lending, uh, Frank had about a 30 year career in the farm credit system. I think Mike's previous career was agronomy and then he moved into ag lending as well. Kevin comes to us from the state of Minnesota where he was an ag educator for many years and also worked in their extension system. Uh, Jack Areda also comes from the farm credit system and has uh, quite a career of both um, service to farmers and also uh, branch management. And then John Tracy is our staff veterinarian who administers the herd based diagnostics program, which we'll cover in more detail in upcoming slides. Talking real broadly about farm setter strengths is under the state law, we have a very broad mandate to provide farmer assistance. And that really helps us be flexible to meet the needs of whatever the current farm economy calls for. Uh, for example, last year with the onset of COVID, um, we spent a lot of time helping farmers learn about the PPP program, EIDL loans, um, and other kinds of government programs. Um, because of that broad mandate that really uh, asked us to provide farmer assistance, we're very flexible and versatile to try and meet farmer needs. 
Uh, as I mentioned in an earlier slide, um, privacy protection is very important. Um, everyone on the team focuses on maintaining complete confidentiality in all cases. So I think that's a really important uh, feature that um, we can talk about. When you work with the Farm Center, you can trust that um, your information uh, will be kept to confidentiality. We very much implement a team approach. Um, we uh, take a, a collaborative approach to every case. And additionally, we can tap into the knowledge of our teammates in the egg development division. That division is about 20 to 24 people. Um, there's an economic development team that works with organics, value-added programs, meat production, and also dairy processors. And we can tap into that team's skill set as well, kind of as needed. We've got a history of successful collaboration with other government and non-government organizations. And we really strive to be that objective, third-party, independent view. That's something uh, very important for us. We try to be objective. Um, we try to uh, deliver uh, information based in fact. And uh, like I said, we try to um, be that, that third party, that independent view that can then help farmers with analysis and problem solving. We talked about financial consulting. Uh, some of those services that the folks with the lending background on the team might provide is helping farmers review balance sheets, predict cash flows, analyze profitability, viability, and sustainability. And um, when you think about the team's expansive uh, lending background, they're great at helping farmers analyze debt structure and they can help farmers come up with creative solutions to help reorganize debt to try to improve profitability and, and navigate uh, troubling or, or challenging uh, economic periods. Transition and succession planning is another area that we focus on, and that's about helping farms maintain financial stability, define and develop operating agreements between the new generation or the buying uh, party. Uh, we help farmers navigate tax implications and put together estate plans to help uh, transition and um, transfer you know, successful farm businesses to a new generation. Our goal is to keep them operating in Wisconsin whenever possible. We also offer a farm mediation program. Uh, this is the farm mediation arbitration program. Um, and this is no cost to participants and it is confidential. And to administer this program, we uh, develop, train and maintain a pool of certified volunteer mediators. And um, this can help farmers uh, navigate disputes with neighbors, family farm conflicts, um, if they are uh, denied a loan or have, you know, uh, a threat of foreclosure, um, this program can help uh, um, mediate those issues. And this program is funded in part by a USDA grant program. And because of that, it is mandatory for any USDA program disputes. Um, USDA invests in this program so that we can come to resolution more quickly and try to minimize costly legal fees for disputes that uh, become ongoing over time. One other neat program that we have is the herd-based diagnostics program. As mentioned, we have a veterinarian on staff, Dr. John Tracy. He serves a non-regulatory function and he focuses on diagnosing unresolved production or disease issues in dairy herds. And he very much uh, implements a team approach as well. He'll work with your local vet, your nutritionist, and whomever other service providers uh, work on your dairy's management team. Uh, this program is available at no cost to dairy farmers. And the focus of this program is to analyze and develop uh, reports and recommendations. Our newest program, is uh, one we're very proud of recently launching and it's the Farmer Wellness Program. And I'm very pleased to pass the baton over to our uh, division's Bureau Director in Ag and Resource Promotions, uh, Jane Krull, and she'll um, be able to walk you through some of the thinking behind how this program is set up and how it's been executed uh, the last uh, six to nine months. Thank you, Dan. Again, my name is Jane Krull. I oversee the Farm Center as well as some of our agricultural marketing and promotion programs at the at DACAP. 
Uh, appreciate you having us today. Glad to be on the line to be able to promote some of our services. The Farm Center does a great job. And now we have this new program, our Farmer Wellness Program as well, that we really wanna get the word out about. Um, as Dan mentioned with our services, we talk to thousands of farmers every year in our 800 line and our staff talk directly to farmers every day. Uh, so we saw the need for this program back in 2019, we proposed and we're, we're lucky to receive uh, some funding from the state legislature, $100,000 a year to spend specifically on farmer mental health related activities. So with that, uh, we introduced the Wisconsin Farmer Wellness Program. It primarily is counts, a group of counseling services where farmers can receive free and confidential services, no matter what your need is. If you have just a in the moment need that you wanna to talk to somebody, we have a 24 seven hotline. We also have um, face to face counseling or virtual counseling sessions you can do. So I'll explain that a little further. First of all, we were happy in July of 2020 to introduce the 24 seven line. It is manned by licensed mental health counselors specifically dedicated for Wisconsin farmers to call at any time of the day. Here's our number 888-901-2558. We hope you'll write that down and, and tell other people about it as well. Uh, that will offer around the clock support. This is a pilot program, I should mention. Uh, we hope uh, this is in the governor's budget proposal that we will continue this funding. So we're hopeful that we will be able to continue this. But our 24 seven hotline is available. In addition, we have telecounseling sessions. We have a dedicated licensed mental health counselor in Wisconsin. Her name is Jess Beauchamp. She has been based in Marinette County for many years. She has worked a lot with farm families, farmers, and farm couples. Uh, she recently moved to the Fox Valley area, so she's in Appleton Green Bay now. But she offers, you know, telecounseling. So anybody in the state can can uh, work with her on actual sessions over the computer or, or, or over the phone or text. So Jess is available as well for telecounseling. And then lastly, we have the longstanding counseling voucher program. This is something the Farm Center staff have had uh, for quite some time is a counseling voucher program where farmers can receive vouchers to take and redeem at a licensed mental health counselor in their area for face-to-face -face sessions as well for themselves or their families. So uh, we were able through the legislature to get additional funding for that before we, we got it through a program called Sowing Seeds of Hope. So we had more limited funds. Now we're able to promote the program more. It was kind of something the Farm Center had in their back pocket before that we couldn't promote because of limited funding. Now that we have uh, more funding, we're able to promote it to farmers. So we're happy to have all these options. If you need to call somebody any time of the day, if you wanna meet somebody over the computer, we've had a lot of farmers that are using the telecounseling say, wow, I was going to someone in my local area, but it's so nice I don't have to clean up and, and go anywhere. I can just join over the computer or over the phone. So they're enjoying that. And then we have the, of course, uh, option of going somewhere in your local area face-to-face. -face. So that is our, in a nutshell, what our counseling services are through the Farmer Wellness Program. We also, I wanna expand a little bit more on the counseling voucher program. Again, we have the three options, but the counseling voucher program has really seen a lot of growth in the last year again. Um, as you'll see on the little chart here, um, Dan talked about the farm crisis in 2008. Well, we're seeing that again, as you can see, the numbers are really going up on the need for our counseling vouchers with COVID and all the things going on right now with the farm economy. So farmers can receive vouchers, as I said, to redeem for one hour counseling sessions at an area provider. Typically we give about three to each farmer that requests it. Um, they can request more afterwards if they need more and we always follow up with them afterwards um, to see if they need more. Uh, we recently through this funding were able to promote and find more counselors in the state. We, were, we increased I think 95 new counselors in the last year. So now we cover 60 out of the 72 counties in the state. Um, I think the only few that we don't have like in the whole Southern part of the state would be Lafayette, uh, Racine and Buffalo are the only three counties. The other counties that we haven't fulfilled yet are at the very top of the state. But we were able to now increase and have more coverage. So um, these vouchers are available that you can take and redeem from all these counselors throughout the state. Um, and as you'll see, the numbers have increased. Uh, we've had more 
vouchers issued and redeemed since 2009. So um, this is a great program that we hope you'll take advantage of or tell a friend about. Next slide, Dan. So I also want to take this opportunity to promote something else we've done. It's a podcast. It's called Rural Realities, where we have topics related to anything that would cause a farmer extra stress or anxiety and anything we can do to help you cope when you're in the tractor, when you're in the barn, you could listen to this. Um, like topics like how do we break the stigma of mental health, uh, navigating change when the world has changed, discussing the undiscussable, that's about the difficult farm family dynamics and the conversations and how to make those conversations happen, um, finding fairness in farm transfer, farm financials, and another one about farm children and how they experience the stress of the farm as well. We've got a few more than that, but this is just an idea. You can find all our services through Farm Center and Farmer Wellness at farmcenter.wi.gov. And that's where you can find the link to download the podcast as well. Next slide, Dan. Lastly, I just wanted to mention a few other initiatives. The majority of our funding goes into those counseling services I already covered, but um, we also are doing some online farmer support groups. We have one group for farmers, another group specifically for farm couples. This is a uh, led by peer leaders. So other farmers who have had some stress or experiences in their lives uh, run those sessions. We also have Jess, our licensed mental health counselor that does the telecounsel, te telecounseling join those sessions as well. We haven't had the attendance we wanted on these. So we're hoping that you can uh, look that up on our website and, and take advantage of that or, or, or spread the word for us. Something that we're just starting to do is working also on job hunting support and resources. We are um, reinvigorating an old workbook we had made back in the 80s when farmers were finding themselves having to exit farming and having to experience job hunting for the first time in their lives, never having done a resume and all the stress that goes around with finding what career is best for you if you have to exit farming. As you know, also a lot of farmers have to find off farm income. So we're putting together this job hunting workbook specifically for farmers with a lot of resources on how to do that. We also are planning to have some kind of career coaching grant or voucher program uh, so that you can take uh, and go to someone in your local area to help you possibly build a resume or determine what your next step is in your, in your career. So um, we also, the last thing I wanted to highlight is farm culture online trainings. We had done a project last year with the UW Green Bay and the DHS, our state agency, Department of Health Services to do some online farm culture trainings. We have eight modules that they can take and receive CEU credits for so that they can learn the unique aspects of the farming occupation and so that they can better provide service and understanding to farmers that they work with. So this is already established, but now we're gonna you do something similar uh, in the farm center. We're actually gonna develop similar modules with the idea that we'll have two tracks for one for general practitioners because we know in the rural areas a lot of people rely on their general practitioners and another one for agricultural service providers specifically for service providers like milk callers ai technicians that type of thing who are going on the farm maybe some are starting for the first time with their company and have never worked on farms before how can we help them better understand how to work with farmers how to recognize the signs of stress and what to do that type of thing so so those are some additional initiatives we're working on. So that in a nutshell tells you about our farmer wellness program. Um, we hope you will uh, take advantage of these. Um, we haven't had quite as many uh, calls to the 24 seven line, for instance, as we expected, although, you know, how do you know, but um, we know that we have a lot more bandwidth to help a lot more farmers. So we hope that you'll be able to make a call if you just need a listening ear um, that we can provide that support now and, and we're really happy to have those resources now in the farm center. We don't have licensed mental health counselors, but we have been working on onboarding these licensed mental health counselors so that they understand farming if they don't hadn't already. So we hope you'll give us, give, the, give us a call and utilize these services. With that, I'm going to pass it over. We'll have time for questions at the end. I'm gonna pass it now to Mike Lochner. Mike is going to cover farm financials. Mike talks to farmers every single day and works with a lot of farmers on their financials. So he's going to talk about navigating challenging times. Mike. 
Thank you, Gene. And I want to uh, welcome everyone to the Agribility Summit. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, next, uh, and as you can see, um, we, we, I'm one of the farm loan specialists. Uh, myself, Dan said I have an agronomy background, which I do about 15 years. And also I have about 20 plus years in the ag lending field. And between uh, Jack and Frank and myself, we have over 80 years of uh, lending, ag lending experience. So that we bring a lot of wealth and it's uh, very, very good to bounce questions off of each other. And we run into a fair amount of, um, as you might think, uh, interesting, Interest, interesting situations when we are talking with some of our farmers and, and evaluating some of our cases. So, but where I'm gonna focus on is it's, the topic is green flags, red flags, and the cinch, essentially it's most, you know, it's uh, most businesses to stay in business, they have to maximize profit, or minimize losses. And in the last five years, you've been exposed to trying to minimize losses uh, to, to a great degree. So um, next slide, Dan. You know, some of the green flags that we try to, try to uh, incorporate are, you know, have a passion, light a fire under yourself and, you know, just to uh, keep yourself motivated. Everybody is, you know, they're on this, these farms, no matter what the farm is, because they love the industry and they love the, the career that they're in. Um, and part of that pr successful nature is how do you network with other successful farmers? You know, there's numerous groups out there now um, for dairy, for instance, there's PDPW. That's a strong organization. There's, uh, every county has an extension agent and they have, I know extension currently is working on the coffee chats. And these are different ways to, you know, just take time, sit down or, you know, take time. <laughs> Unfortunately, now we're sitting in front of the computers, but um, that's been, a very workable solution to the shelter in place that we've been under for the last year or more. Um, management decisions, you know, planning, organizing, um, and a lot of the larger dairies and most of the most of the dairies have to take that staffing into consideration. They have to manage employees. Um, Make those decisions, you know, try to have fun with them and make them a priority. You know, have, you know, a lot of fa farm families that we work with, they have monthly meetings, you know, or quarterly meetings. Um, and then lastly, install a business decision-making process into your business, um, you know, and that's, Part of that is all that I'll touch on in following slides. So Dan, advance, please. Thank you. Um, the other things we'd like to encourage is in times of you know, financial stress, make sure you are willing to keep the lines of communication open with your lender. You know, lenders are more often than not willing to work with you if they know what you have planned. Um, and they, you know, they're, they're, unfortunately, lenders, because of the regulations, they are fairly somewhat limited in what they can do for you. But, you know, the limitations come when you're really at the end of your rope. And, you know, they've done what they can do for you. Um, I know they, many banks, have the option to get uh, FSA guaranteed loans. And they can do, that allows them a little more flexibility in how they can service your loan. 
and no lender wants to, uh, you know, take take you into foreclosure, you know, or collect your equipment or cattle. You know, that's the last thing they want to do. That's not the reason why the loan was made initially. So make sure you keep the lines of communication open with your lender. And part of that process is, is to provide a balance, accurate balance sheets and your income and expense statements. Um, that's how they can analyze and summarize and pre uh, present the, your requests or your reviews for how you're performing. And they have to do those reviews and present those to the board annually or to a credit committee. Um, provide a projected cash flow. Now I know there are some areas in extension, but um, also a lot of the tech college instructors can assist with the projected cash flows. We will, we will assist, but to help with putting out a projected cash flow, but the numbers need to come from you. We want to make sure that we're, you know, an unbiased third party as far as the analysis, and that that can lead to a lot of. Um, we need to make sure that there's a trust between you and the trust between your lender. And we, that's where we feel we provide such a large, uh, in a large um, benefit to our cases. And, you know, the other thing is, is you don't want to just walk in the day of when you ask for the money and think you're going to get the money that day. Uh, the days of just walking in and getting a loan from your ag loan officer, those days are gone, as many of you have experienced. So, you know, you have to do all of the, the top the bullet point number two and three, you have to have that prepared in advance when you go in and sit down and meet with your ag loan officer to ask for a credit extension or credit servicing, loan servicing in any form. And most of you are most of you are familiar with the request for going in and taking care of your annual operating needs. And lastly, develop repayment plans that are within your um, ability to debt serve for the debt service requirements that are needed. Next slide, please, Dan. You know, and part of that is is you know, the, especially on the income and expense portion, keep detailed and accurate records. You know, a lot of lenders and a lot of the tax accountants like, like records that are kept each month. Um, so that when you come in and he can quickly analyze the records and get your taxes or have any questions that he might have. Um, you know, digital provides a lot of flexibility. And there again, there are a number of uh, farm uh, analysis programs out there. You know, QuickBooks is the most common, but I know there's also FinPAC. That's used a lot by the, uh, the county um, extension offices and by the tech college instructors. Um, one thing to remember too is if you if you provide garbage and that goes into it, you're going to get garbage out. Um, you know we have a, a saying in the farm center, you know we can give you bad advice with bad information or we can give you good advice with good information. You know, accuracy and, and data integrity, those are two keys. And most importantly, if you have good records, you can, if you can't uh, figure out your own cost of production, we can assist you with that. You know, um, you know your cost of production, if you don't know whether or not you're above your production costs or below your production costs, as far as your milk check each month, you know, those are vital 
inf that's vital information to the health of the and the viability of the dairy to keep on going. Next slide. You know, review your financial position annually. And that gets back to normally your lenders, your ag lenders are going to request the information from you and comp your finance, or, you know, any of the farm credits across the state. We work a lot with comp your financial or the F, and we work largely with FSA offices. And if they don't have good records, it's hard for them to make good decisions. It gets back to that garbage in, garbage out. If you know how, if they don't know from a year to year basis how the farm is performing, it's very difficult for them to make a, a, a good sound decision about your operation. You know, identify benchmarks. And we'll get, we'll touch on that toward the end of the familiars, but um, the university extension has benchmarks that are ad identified for all ag enterprises. Um, and become familiar with financial calculations, calculations and ratios. And I'll touch more on this at a later, in, in the later slides. Next slide, Dan. Um, one thing we really try to promote is work with a team of professionals. Um, many, many times the cases that we work with, they may need um, accounting advice. So that would be a matter of talking with your tax professional, whether they're a CPA or, you know, if they just are someone that does taxes, but make sure you work with somebody that's very familiar with doing farm tax records. And the other thing is, is, you know, keep, you know, have a, have an attorney that you know that you can trust that knows your operation that you can turn to in the event that you do need legal advice. You know, also there are a number of consultants out there and again, work with your lenders. You know, make sure the make sure you keep the communication open with your lenders. So basically, it's important to have those three individuals help you with your team. Now, from a production management standpoint, also you know your nutritionist for helping you manage the farm. Um, you know, and and your veterinarian, and your lender can be part of those meetings as well. Um, but, you know, a team of professionals so that, you know, farming has become that specialized now that it's hard, you know, the farm manager and the farm owner cannot become adapted to all that's involved. Um, you know, whether it's the FSA programs, you know, it's hard to keep on top of all of those, especially the, in the last year, all the FSA programs that are, you know, that are, have come, were come out and the, you know, the, the PPP program, you need to work with people that are understanding and very aware of all of those programs that are out there to maximize, you know, any program dollars that could be expected. You know, learn to work cooperatively, cooperatively with your specialists. And I think I covered that, um, you know, adequately enough. Understand and respect debt. Um, you know, this this is pretty important. As many of you know, if if you're not, you know, if you don't understand where your debt level is at, it's hard to come up with a projection that would be viable year after year. You know. Um, you know, profits and there's, there's only two ways that debt can be reduced. And that's shown there with profits or the sale of assets. You know, there's an example below that we can just quickly review, but I'm sure most of you know, you don't like to have debt. You like to try and make the extra payments when you can. 
but in the last five years of the dairy industry, you know, 2020 was kind of an anomaly, but, um, you know, the previous five years prior to that, you know, it was very difficult to meet, meet your operating, uh, much less paying off any extra debt. But I know there's some grain farmers that were real happy last year and some dairy farmers that had excess grain to sell. They were able to take advantage of paying off additional or catching up on quite a quite a few bills with the with the uh, prices for cash grain and for the dairy last year. Next slide. Um, you know, one thing is work closely with your tax advisor. You know, your tax preparer because there are some tax strategies that he might be able to utilize. Um, one, one that used to be utilized, and I believe it's still, you know, uh, some tax preparers are still able to take advantage of this is income averaging. You know, that's going back over a three year period of time and, you know, averaging your historical income and expense, your historical taxes, to help either, you know, to help defer from some tax that you might be liable for that you might have to pay or to just reduce, you know, reduce what you owe. Um, and keep in mind, tax avoidance is not tax evasion. You know, that's one, that's one real important point um, that you, you know, nobody ever went broke making a profit. So it's, you know, you want to make sure that you pay some taxes. A big part of this paying taxes is, is then you're funding your own social security, you know, because you need, you need to have 40 quarters of social security payments to be eligible to collect social security at your retirement. Next slide. You know, set goals, both personally and for the business. You know, what would you, you know, set, set goals to maybe get away every six months or so for you and you and the spouse or you and your, for you and your significant other to get away every six months or so, either for just a date night or maybe take a weekend and get away, line up, line up somebody to do the chores for you ahead of time, or, or even take longer vacations, you know, go on a, go on a bus trip, you know, um, Pam Yonke has uh, bus trips, I believe, well, she had bus trips twice a year, or trips overseas. Um, maybe you and your wife, as you ending, or ending the year, end of the career, maybe you have some, some uh, heirs, heirs that are willing to come in and do the chores for you, or they're working full time on the farm with you. Hopefully, um, you know that they can they can take over and make the management decisions for a while. You know, a few, a week or two or ten days when you're gone on an extended trip. Prepare for life changes. You know. Make sure you're talking to your kids or encouraging your kids maybe to pursue college. Um, most, you know, if, from my opinion, most most significant, uh, you know, most operations that are more successful have encouraged the kids to go to college or if it's nothing more than working off the farm for another number of years to encourage you know, encourage them to get away to understand that there is life outside of the farm. But then maybe when they come back, they won't feel as though when they work for other for other in, industries or other people, they maybe won't think they had it so bad on the farm and they learn to appreciate it more. Next slide. need to manage risk, 
you know, and that's part of it. And there's plenty of insurance options out there now to help manage your dairy income and help manage your crop income. You know, some of these are a requirement uh, of, you know, being el eligible for certain farm programs. You know, and, you know, in some cases, if you're, especially if you're in a larger dairy, you may want to ask for um, private and private firms to help you with your marketing strategies, you know, whether it's grain marketing or milk marketing. And then have you, uh, have you taken the time to review a transition plan? Or do you, what do you have in mind to move the farm forward? If you're in your between 45 and 55, now would be, that would be a, a prime time to begin thinking about these things. Who of my, who in my family might be willing to take over when we decide to retire? And maybe none, maybe none of them are. Well, how do you plan to transition the farm or what is your plan to at least keep the farm legacy partly intact so that your children can at least come back and have a place to come home that they can call home and a farmstead that they can call home. Maybe it's a matter of, you know, trying to rent out the, rent out the cropland. You know, if, if you and your husband or you, if, and you and, or you and your wife are not, um, are not uh, long-term, that's not in part of your long-term plan for retirement that you wanna continue farming. I know that's uh, hard to believe because most farmers, you know, they wanna stay on the farm and work and be involved in the farm. They just don't wanna make the day-to-day -day decisions after they get to be retiring. And remember, Everyone need, you know, you should at least have a will as a transition plan. And remember tax laws change regularly. You know, we, we are currently under a new uh, president and there's been rumors that he has, you know, he has uh, run it up the flagpole to drastically change the tax laws that have been in place for the last three to four years. So we need to be, talking with your tax accountant to be mindful of that and have some idea how, how you might be affected by that. Um, there's a lot of potential changes to estate taxes and, uh, and transition plans, you know, pri primarily through the changes in capital gains that are being float about, floated about. Next slide. Now we get into some of the red flags, um, and these are these are red flags to any creditor. You know, if there's multiple lenders, if you if there's a high amount of credit card debt, be mindful that all lenders now will pull a credit bureau report on you. They want to find out how, you know, how you're how you're paying off your other bills, your personal bills. And they'll they'll get an idea of how how much credit card debt you're you're running. You know, get in the habit of frequently requesting payment due date extensions. That's another red flag when you if you go in and try to uh, work with a new lender, for instance. Um, you know, how often have you your credit card debt, and if you've they can tell by your credit report that you've maybe you've talked to two or three ag lenders, you've gone to other banks and maybe have been denied. So, um, you know, that's one of the things that will show up on a credit on a credit report is how many lenders you've talked to, you know, um, and the, usually savvy lenders can figure out, well, has there been a restructure uh, from your operating an intermediate debt to stretch it out over your real estate. You know, um, take out, take risks outside as compared to equity. That just means um, don't, 
don't extend yourself beyond your equity position. Um, there's a saying, if you, if you are making the, a decision about your operation and more than likely it, it's expansion, if you're making a decision that is gonna take you to 30% equity, owner equity or less, um, you've borrowed your last dollar. So avoid that. You know, you don't wanna, it's not worth, an expansion is not worth the risk if you're gonna put yourself out of business over five to 10 years. Next slide, please. Um, the, another warning sign is, is when lenders analyze the, your profitability trend, and that's why they ask for three years of tax returns, they can get a sense of if there's been some good years in that three years, they can get a sense of whether or not how well you've performed. If you've had um, you know, little or no profits in those good years or worse yet, if you show a loss during those good years, that's a red flag. Um, and they can also, next, the next point is, is they can also tell if there's been a revaluation of livestock equipment and real estate, you know, that'll to pump up the balance sheet. We've seen um, early, you know, between 2012 and 2016 and 17, we saw significant increases in land real estate. And also during that time period, livestock, you know, cattle and equipment were, were reevaluated and were bringing good money. You know, excessive new equipment, well, that's, that stands to reason, um, you know, and you can tell the operations that have uh, all kinds of new paint. They're probably in, you know, even though they have the new paint, they might be struggling to make those payments. Poorly maintained farmstead or equipment. So that's also, that's called living, you know, when, when you don't have significant profits to keep up with your depreciation, that's called living off depreciation. You know, and then frequent requests, and that goes to the lenders or, or if you're, again, getting back to the multiple credit cards. You know, if you're resorting to using credit cards and you're, you know, you're revolving those credit card, that credit card debt from one card to another, that's a red flag. And that can all be, those are all apparent when you, uh, when you look at a credit report. Here's the financial targets that I was referring to, or some in a lot of cases, you can refer to those as farm benchmarks. Uh, the working capital of two to one, that's more of a financial standard that's more applicable to maybe beef, um, you know, beef, but largely to uh, cash grain operations, you know. In my 20 plus years of ag lending, rarely have I seen a dairy uh, meet that two to one liquidity unless they have some beef cattle in inventory and they have some crop, crops, uh, excess crops in inventory. And the reason for that is, is because feeds, you know, you're feeding, you need to feed the dairy cows every day. So your feed inventories are going down daily, monthly, so it's just difficult for a dairy operation to maintain a two to one liquidity. More, more often than not, if we see 1.25, you know, working capital position to one, um, you know, that's, that's probably more in line with, and that's probably indicative of a pretty strong dairy that they're in good liquidity, liquidity position. What the liquidity definition is, is it's the difference between your uh, current assets and current liabilities. And that's how that ratio is arrived at. It's a, just a matter of taking, of dividing those two, your working total working capital or total current asset dollars divided by your total liability dollars. 
or your current liability dollars. Um, the other one other target is for dairy operations. This applies and it could be um, applicable to other, other operations, but primarily it's a reflection in dairy. You know, that you want to keep your principal interest, principal and interest below 20% of your gross income. And another way to look at that is, you know, it's a debt per hundred weight measurement. And I'll address that on bullet point four. Uh, operating expenses, you want to keep those below 85%. Why is that? Because if you're at that 85% or higher level, your, your total income only has 15% room or less to meet family living obligations and debt principal and interest obligations. And then three to 5,000 debt per cow, that used to be, and that has for a long time been a standard for you know, successful operations. And that's, you know, that would, that would mean that there would not be a red flag if your debt per cow level is between three and 5,000. And the new, you know, the, the lenders are also looking at what is your debt per hundred weight. And if your debt per hundred weight is less than $20, $20 you know, per, per hundred weight, you know, if, so in other words, if your total liabilities are less than $20 of your, less than $20 per hundred weight, you know, that's also a good, strong financial signal. Um, equity, owner equity equal to your age. You know, that's a rough rule of thumb. That again, that's been around since the inception of, of lending benchmarks. Um, you know, so basically if you're 60 years old, you ideally should have 60% 60, 60 or better owner as an owner equity percentage. So next slide, please, Dan. I think that's the last slide. We'll leave you with this quote. I don't know how easy it is for many of you to read, but you know, Dwight D. Eisenhower had a famous quote that I've seen numerous times. Farming looks easy when your plow is a pencil and you're a thousand miles away from a cornfield. So well, I'll leave you with that. Um, are there any questions? Yeah, thanks Mike and Jane and, and thanks Amanda. We are so appreciative of the invite from AgriBility as a Wisconsin to uh, present to you today. Um, it was a real pleasure. We enjoyed pulling together this content. Uh, this last slide has just got our contact info, which we wanted to make available to you one more time. And um, as Mike had mentioned, we'll we'll hang on here, you know, for however long we need to, if there are questions. And if not, um, just thanks for uh, using your time to to spend with us uh, and the Wisconsin Farm Center today. One thing I want to add, Dan and Jane, if I I think the Farm Center, it's safe to say that the Department of Ag is, is very interested in working in the future with AgriAbilities and becoming part of these annual AgriAbility summits. So thank you. Yeah, that's great to hear. Thanks guys. And I am just gonna put a quick poll up um, for everyone. You can, there's three questions. You can just uh, scroll down after you do the first one. Um, and once you answer those, uh, I'll leave it up for a minute or two here. And you can also see the Farm Center um, information if you want to reach out to them directly. I really appreciate Mike, Dan, and Jane all being here today for our last day of our virtual summit. And like I had said, mentioned earlier, I hope in 2022 we can all get together in person again and um, you know chat uh, as we would normally over a year ago. So uh, appreciate everything. Um, and everyone helping out uh, the last three days for this summit. And if you have any questions about agribility, you can reach out to me at agribility at wisc.edu. Uh, or of course, you can go to our website uh, when you get a chance. 
I'll just leave this pull up for a couple of seconds here. All right, looks like most people have seen that, so I appreciate it. Again, thanks everyone for joining us today. And thank you, Amanda. Thank you again. Yep. Take care, everyone. Bye. Yep. Bye. Bye.